Hello from the incredible JW Marriott Maldives. After many years of earning, burning, and churning, I'm finally checking off a major bucket list item by staying at one of these spectacular overwater villas here in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The Maldives are a hugely popular destination for a bucket list trip, like a honeymoon or an anniversary trip, especially among people who like to collect points, because after all, nobody wants to spend the thousand dollars or more that it would otherwise cost to stay at a place like this. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then in this video, we're gonna go over the step-by-step -step process for earning and redeeming enough points to stay at an overwater bungalow like this, starting from scratch. By the way, if you like these videos, if you think I do a decent job of showing people how to travel the world on points, or if you just think this suite is really pretty, then I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel just by clicking the subscribe button below the video. It really helps me out, really tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job and it could get them to show the video to even more people and make their dreams come true as well. And without further ado, let's get started. Now, most of the time when I'm planning a trip, I usually start by thinking about the airlines and the flights, and I get those booked before I start thinking about the hotel. But the Maldives are pretty unique in the sense that it's all about where you stay. It's all about getting the overwater villa experience. So I actually think that the best course of action is to first decide on a resort that you want, and then formulate a plan for staying there on points, and then think about the flights. There are about 130 different resorts here on the islands, atolls, and reefs in the Maldives, and only a handful of them are actually affiliated with the major hotel chains that you can book with your loyalty points. For Canadians, it's probably gonna be easiest to use your Marriott points or your Hilton Honors points, but if you do have a stash of Hyatt, IHG, or Accor points, then obviously the Park Hyatt, the Intercontinental, and the Fairmont here in the Maldives are excellent options as well. Marriott has five different properties here in the Maldives that are worth your consideration. The St. Regis, the JW Marriott, the W, the Westin, and the Sheraton. Whereas Hilton has three different properties, the Waldorf Astoria, the Conrad, and the Sai Lagoon a curio collection property. Now let's be totally honest here, all eight of these properties are no doubt gonna make for a wonderful experience for you, but there's definitely an argument to be made that if you're going all the way out to the Maldives, you may as well splurge a little extra for the best experience possible. And so if that's the case for you, then you'll probably wanna skip over the Sheraton and the Sai Lagoon property because those are Still gonna be very nice resorts, but probably a tier below the very best that Marriott and Hilton have to offer. Out of the six remaining properties, they're all gonna be an amazing time, they're all amazing places, so it's all gonna come down to how many points you wanna splash on the reservation itself, how much money you wanna spend on the mandatory seaplane or speedboat transfer, as well as a few other factors that we'll talk about. Now that seaplane or speedboat transfer is a very important point because even when you use your points to book a free stay here in the Maldives, you still need to pay out of pocket for the seaplane or the speedboat between Mali International Airport and the capital of the Maldives and your individual resort itself out here in one of the islands or atolls or reefs. These transfer fees are usually in the range of 400 to 800 US dollars per person, and there's no real way for you to get out of paying it because it's a major way that the resorts and the seaplane operators make money. And that's another thing for you to be mentally prepared about before coming to the Maldives, which is the fact that even if you can use your points to cover the room itself, all the incidental costs like the transfer fees and the food and drink costs at the resorts are likely to add up very quickly, and so it's likely to still be a good chunk of money out of pocket for you. Anyway, if we take a look at the number of points required for these resorts, we see that within Marriott Bonvoy, the St. Regis, the W, the JW Marriott's are all Category 8 hotels, meaning that they'll require 70,000, 85,000, or 100,000 points per night, depending on if it's off-peak standard or peak dates. Meanwhile, the Westin is a Category 7 resort requiring 50,000, 60,000, or 70,000 points, 
depending on the date. I've also listed the seaplane transfer costs here, and as you can see, it's definitely not going to be cheap and could play a major role in determining which of these resorts you end up choosing. Over on the Hilton side, the Waldorf Astoria Maldives Itafushi is one of two properties in the entire portfolio that needs to be booked at the maximum rate of 120,000 Hilton Honors points per night whereas the Conrad comes in at a much more reasonable 95,000 Hilton Honors points per night. For the Waldorf, you'll also need to pay for a speedboat ride that costs a jaw-dropping 862 US dollars round trip per person, whereas for the Conrad, it's a much more reasonable seaplane fee of around 500 US dollars round trip per person. Now, in addition to the monetary costs of booking a resort in the Maldives, you'll also want to think about a few other things as well. The first is that not every resort allows you to book an overwater villa directly with points, and an overwater villa is pretty much the only reason that people come to the Maldives. For example, when I booked my stay here at the JW Marriott, I was able to use my Marriott Bonvoy points to book directly into the overwater villa. Whereas over at the St. Regis, your points can only be used to book into the base level garden villa, and then after that, you're looking at either a couple hundred dollars per night extra to upgrade to the overwater villa, or you're looking at relying on your elite status for a complimentary upgrade. And speaking of hotel status, that'll also be a major consideration when deciding which resort to book. Ideally, you're going to want at least platinum status with Marriott or gold status with Hilton so that you can get the perks such as the complimentary breakfast where you can load up on a killer brunch if you want to avoid the hopelessly overpriced lunch and dinner costs or you can use your status to get an upgrade to the overwater villas if you didn't originally book one with your points. If you're starting completely from scratch and you don't think you'll be able to earn Marriott Platinum status, which requires 50 nights spent at Marriott hotels, then the easiest option here is probably to apply for the Hilton Aspire card in the US, which is so hot right now. And that'll give you instant diamond status at Hilton Hotels, which will ensure that you're treated like royalty when you stay at either the Waldorf or the Conrad. Finally, of course, you're going to want to do a little bit of your own research into which resort that you actually like best. They all vary a little bit in different ways, such as the age of the resort, the visual decor, the level of service, the food and beverage costs, and then the tiny little details like whether your private pool is closer to the ocean or closer to the villa, or whether there's sand or coral reefs out there in the ocean once you step down. So for these things, you probably want to consult the many individual hotel reviews that have been published, as well as people's experiences on websites like flyertalk.com. All right, it's getting super hot out here, so let's go back inside. All right, now that we've thought about all the factors that go into deciding on a resort, let's think about how many points you'll need. For the Marriott hotels, let's assume that you're booking the standard rate rather than the off-peak or peak rates. So that's going to be 85,000 points per night for the Category 8 St. Regis, JW Marriott, and W, or 60,000 points per night for the Category 7 Weston. And obviously, if you end up booking an off-peak rate instead of a standard rate, then you'll actually need fewer points than that. Now, here's an important point, which is that both Marriott and Hilton offer a fifth night free benefit when you're redeeming points for hotels. And I would say that five nights is a very good amount of time for a luxurious honeymoon or anniversary trip. So let's assume that you're aiming for a five night stay. So if we do the math on the number of points required, then we're looking at getting enough points for four nights because of that fifth night free benefit. So for the Marriott hotels, that's going to be between 280,000 points and 340,000 points. And for the Conrad, it's going to be 380,000 Hilton points. That's 95,000 times four. And for the Waldorf Astoria, it's going to be 480,000 points, which is 120,000 points per night times four. Also keep in mind that these redemption price points are valid only for the base level rooms or villas at every resort. And there may be a limited number of such base level rooms or villas at every resort. So it's best to book far in advance in order to have the best chances of finding a block of five nights in a row of the base level room or villa. Now that we know how many points we need, 
we need to figure out a strategy for earning those points via the credit card sign-up bonuses. Now, I've already made a video about the Marriott Bonvoy credit cards in Canada, but basically, if both you and your partner sign up for the personal and business versions of the card, that's 230,000 Marriott Bonvoy points right there. 50,000 points times four from the sign-up bonuses, and 10,000 points times three from the referral bonuses. To make up the difference to the 280,000 or 340,000 points that you need, you can look into canceling and reapplying for one of the Bonvoy cards to get the bonus again, transferring over some American Express MR or MR Select points, or getting one of the US Marriott Bonvoy credit cards as well, the US Bonvoy Brilliance or the US Bonvoy Business, which have sign-up bonuses of 75,000 or 100,000 points sometimes. Over on the Hilton side, 380,000 or 480,000 Hilton points might sound like a lot, but if both you and your spouse got the Hilton Aspire card, which has a sign-up bonus of 150,000 Hilton points, that's 300,000 points right there. And then if you were to add one of the no-fee Hilton cards or the $95 Hilton Surpass card for 90,000 points and 135,000 points respectively, that would get you enough points for the 380,000 points for the Conrad or the 480,000 points for the Waldorf Astoria. If you'd rather not get the Hilton credit cards, then another strategy might be to buy Hilton points directly from the program during one of the 100% bonus promotions that comes around a few times per year. Now, during these promotions, you could potentially pick up 480,000 Hilton points for only 2,400 US dollars. That'll be enough points for five nights at the Waldorf Astoria, even though 2,400 US dollars is how much the Waldorf would normally charge for only one night. Come on, we got upgraded to the duplex villa. Let's go check it out. All right, here we go. Whew. It's beautiful up here. All right, so like I've mentioned, the hotels is gonna be the bulk of the work when you're planning your trip to the Maldives. And after you've chosen a hotel, it's time to think about the flights. You're gonna be looking for flights to Mali International Airport, the capital of the Maldives, and there are quite a few ways to go about doing it. For Canadians, the easiest option is probably gonna be using your Aeroplan miles to fly on Star Alliance Airlines, either using Turkish Airlines to fly east to Mali through Istanbul, or using Singapore Airlines to fly west to Mali through Singapore, or a combination of the two. There's also the option of redeeming Cathay Pacific Asia miles on Cathay Pacific flights, from Toronto or Vancouver directly to Hong Kong, followed by a flight from Hong Kong to the Maldives. You could then combine that one-way flight with a separate one-way flight on Qatar Airways to get you back on the way home from Maldives to Doha to Montreal. And if you do choose to fly business class, you'll get to fly the famous Qatar Airways Q suites on the Doha Montreal segment. Finally, Etihad Airways via Abu Dhabi or Emirates via Dubai are obviously very attractive airlines to fly with as well but you're gonna need a huge stash of American Airlines miles and Alaska miles respectively to be able to book the first class products on these airlines and make it an amazing luxury trip for the ages. Now, one more quick tip here is that if you're struggling to find award space to Mali, the capital of the Maldives, then one alternative is to book flights to Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka instead. From Colombo, it's only about an hour and 30 minutes of a flight over to Mali, which can be easily booked with cash or with British Airways Avios to very good effect. In terms of the time frame, if you're planning a special trip to the Maldives, whether it's a honeymoon or a special anniversary trip, I would recommend starting to plan one to two years in advance, which would give you a lot of leeway to book the flights and the hotels and to earn the number of points that's required. Either way, it'll definitely take a little bit of hustle to book a dream trip to the overwater villas of the Maldives like this. But I can tell you that once you're sitting on your deck and looking out over the crystal blue waters of the Indian Ocean, then it'll all be worth it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it's been helpful for you to plan your trip to the Maldives. If so, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the Pins of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. Let me know in the comments which of the Maldives resorts do you like best. I'm gonna go snorkeling now. I'll see you next time. If you don't wanna get the credit cards, another... 
you, can, you need to move with me. And that'll be enough for five nights at the Waldorf Astoria, which is how much that the... Please!